Hi, my name is Tony, and today I've made a video for you, and for me, about John Lennon. He wasn't just anybody. You may not know, but John Lennon was the founder of the Beatles. <laughs> Young people may not know that. Love Me Do and P.S. I Love You were some of their earliest singles. John Lennon was born in Liverpool, England, which is in the northeast of England, on October the 9th, 1940, during the Second World War, and there were bombs going off all over Liverpool. Liverpool was badly blitzed, second only to London during the Second World War. He was the son of Alfred Freddie Lennon, who was quite musical, and his mother, Julia, who was also musical and played the banjo. But John was raised by his auntie, Mimi. There was some complicated things in that family, and nobody totally understands why. Just some families, that's the way it is. John had his auntie, Mimi, that raised him, and lots of aunts and uncles and cousins. He came from a large family. So, it's been said that John didn't exactly feel loved, but it's clear by all these pictures of him as a child that he was. Because I know people in a modern day and age that don't have this many pictures of them when they were children. It was really a cutie. John's mother went on to have other children, so they would be his half-sisters. They'll be coming up in a little while. He always felt like he didn't have parents, and in a way he didn't. Um, it was very strange. Uh, the dynamics were just all wrong. This is his mother, Julia, and that was her home, and she did not live far. It was just walking distance from where he was actually being raised with his Auntie Mimi. His mother didn't raise him. This is John Lennon's paternal grandfather, and his name was John Lennon, but they called him Jack. And he was part of a minstrel group, a musician, an entertainer, a comedian, who actually went to America to perform. Here's some early pictures of John and his buddies. That's Pete Shotton, his best friend. This is the house that John was raised in. And yesterday was his 84th birthday, so they lit the house all up in Liverpool. Um, yesterday, October the 9th, 2024. And I grabbed these pictures off of an, a Liverpool page. I've been here. It's fascinating to be where Lennon was raised. I just don't have any other way of saying it. Here's a not edited picture of my husband standing in front of the house in Liverpool. I'm afraid I'm going to be interrupted by my dog in a second. I was surprised that I went to John Lennon's house. My husband sort of surprised me. And there I am. And I started crying because I just couldn't believe that little room on the left, top left, was his bedroom. So here was John and his half-sister, Julia. Then and now. You know, not then and now, but you know what I mean. Children and grown up. And then he had another sister also called Jacqueline. And their father's name was Dykins. That might be uh, Mimi who raised him. I love this picture of John in the 1950s with his pals. They just look so... <laughs> you just, you know. You just know. <laughs> Here they are a little younger, maybe. He was supposedly the ringleader, if you don't know much about his story. A lot of parents said, we don't want you hanging around with him, including Paul McCartney's father. 
He said, he'll get you in trouble, son. But he met McCartney and he met George Harrison here, who was very young. And there was George maybe in the 1980s. He met George and they went on to become a little group known as the Quarrymen. Because that's where John went to what Americans call high school. Then they went on to become the Beatles. They had a few different names on and off, but it was basically the Beatles. That looks like the Cavern Club to me. Color was probably added to that photograph. Here's the Cavern Club. Do you see it on the left? It's on Matthew Street in Liverpool. It's more like an alley. It's so narrow, so old there. And here's my husband and I. John, I mean Tony, in 2018 uh, when we went up there. And I sang. I'm a singer, and I sang in front of the cavern. I almost had a heart attack. I was, just, I was singing Don't Let Me Down and a few other tunes with that statue of John looking on, and I thought I was going to faint. I was so excited. I couldn't breathe. John Lennon got his first girlfriend, uh, not his first girlfriend, but his first wife pregnant, and he married her. And they had Julian. And Julian grew up to become a musician and a photographer. Now I'm going to get to something a little different. John had some relatives in Scotland that were wealthy. And they gave John a hundred pounds for his birthday. And Paul and John hitchhiked down to the continent they ended up in France and there is where the beetle haircut was born now we're going to look more at John Lennon in the Beatles I have to tell you that uh I was too young when the Beatles first came out. I do remember it because it was such a big thing that even as a tiny little child, everybody was talking about it. You know, children that were older than me, families, people were talking about it. And I do remember watching them on the Ed Sullivan Show. I was born and raised in the Chicago area. I live near London now, but... Um, I do remember it, but I didn't become a fan until I was 12. Something hit me like a ton of bricks and it changed my life forever. I play several instruments and after I became a, a late blooming beetle maniac, I actually started practicing my piano because I wanted to and not just because my parents wanted me to. <laughs> I just went nuts. And from the Beatles, for me personally, I'm just giving you some personal thoughts. It did open up, not just the Beatles, but from them, I learned more about the Rolling Stones. I learned more about early Bee Gees. I started paying attention. I think it was my age. I just started paying attention to the music of the time, the music that was on the pop charts. And I just started looking into all kinds of music. I was listening to Barbara Streisand and Shirley Bassey and <laughs> all kinds of records that my mother had. I just started, it opened up a whole world of music to me, not just the Beatles. But it always came back to the Beatles for me. And I could not tell you why. I don't know why. When I was a teenager, my parents surprised me with tickets to a Paul McCartney concert, Paul McCartney and Wings. I went to see George Harrison. My mother took me because the stadium was in a bad neighborhood in Chicago, so my mother took me to see George Harrison. And oddly enough, um, I was able to sneak up to uh, one of the top floors of the John Hancock building, as it was called then, in Chicago. I dressed up as a reporter. I was 17. I dressed up as a reporter, and I snuck, and I walked right into a Ringo Starr press conference. And in those days, it took a half hour to get down the elevators, the lifts, 
took a half hour to get down. So when the press conference was wrapping up, I thought, I'm going to beat him down. So I beat Ringo down, and I found his limo. <laughs> 17. And um, anyways, uh, I was able to say hello to Ringo, and he was super nice. I mean, he was super like flopsy mopsy Ringo, you know, that you picture playing the drums. He was so nice. Sometimes I think I should have ran away from home that night because he happened to be single at that time. <laughs> I should have just told my mother, the Cadillac's down there by the Hancock building. I'm on a plane to wherever Ringo Starr's going. I should have just done that, but you don't know at that age. <laughs> oh, you can't help but think back what could have been. That's, uh, it's his John and George, but it just does not look like George to me. And then later on in life, I used to go out to New York City. Oh, I'll bet you never saw this picture, or maybe you have. There was a, la a lady watching them get ready for their photo shoot when they did the Abbey Road album. This older woman comes out, and she's just talking to them and watching them get themselves kind of dressed for the photo shoot. <laughs> Anyways, later in life, I um, went out to New York a number of times, and I finally saw John, and he saw me. And I did not get his autograph. I did not know he was going to be killed six months later. If I would have known he was going to die, I honestly would have pushed harder for an autograph, but he was really busy. You could tell he was in a hurry. So I just didn't bother him. It was just enough for me to know I saw him and he saw me. And it was a moment I'll never forget. So I can honestly say that's where I saw him, right in front of the building there. That's the Dakota where he was shot, where he lived. And that's where I saw him. John had a son called Sean with Yoko. I'm not talking much about her. And... Uh, Sean was born on the same day as John. That was planned because it was a C-section. So she uh, arranged to have, uh, she was able to arrange to have, you know, the birth of, of Sean on the same day as, as John's birthday. And of interest, Sean actually means John in Irish, in the Irish language, I think. So up in the top is his son, Julian, and then over here was Sean, and down there was Julian and John with John's, oh, I think it was a Rolls Royce, but it could have been a Bentley. I think that's, a, and it's in a museum now, that car. That was Sean. This, this is pretty much what Sean looks like now. Isn't he like his dad? So like his dad. So now let's get on to May Pang. I don't like Yoko too much. I have my own reasons why. I don't believe she broke up the Beatles. But um, there's other reasons why. For one year, John was with this May Pang. May Pang connected John back with his son Julian, something Yoko never would have done. Yoko tried to rip Julie off, Julian off later in life from his inheritance, and he had to sue her, and he won, but he didn't earn as much money as he had hoped. And everybody hopes that Sean will do Julian right after Yoko passes away. And he was with May for exactly one year. In fact, it was Yoko who sent, kicked him out of the house with May, she was one of their assistants. And she said, let's get on a bus ride. May was fun. She wasn't like Yoko. She said, let's get on a bus and go for a ride. That was in New York City. And May took this picture. May, like I said, reunited John. May took this picture. She reunited Julian with his son. Something Yoko was, you know, forget it. This is before their son, Sean, came into the picture. Remember, John, he had problems with immigration. <laughs> this was a note from Ringo. 
So John's friends liked May. May was with him when this picture, this was him in uh, his apartment with May. They had a balcony out there. So John's doing a concert in Madison Square Garden after a year of being away from Yoko. And who shows up but Yoko at Madison Square Garden? And um, she never realized that John and, and May would actually have a love affair. She didn't expect that to happen. So here they were talking, and that was the end of May Pang. I do not know what... I do not know what kind of hold Yoko had over John. I don't think anybody will ever know. Now, changing the subject, in England, after you've been dead for 20 years, you can have a property, have a, a, a like a blue pack with the English heritage uh, people. So what happened was, the house that we looked at earlier that John grew up in, it went. I, it, I think it went up for sale. I could be wrong, but it went up for sale. And Yoko, I'll give her this. She bought the house and she donated it. Yeah, to the uh, people, and it has a blue pack. Another little changing the story. Paul McCartney got married in 2011, and he married Nancy Shovel on John's birthday. So you can see John always loved Nancy, and Nancy's right there. And she is a cousin of Barbara Walters, the journal, American journalist. Yeah. So we all miss John. He was really, really special. And one question they always has, had to answer is, when are the Beatles going to get back together? And uh, John Lennon, he wasn't just anybody, was he? I hope that this video works. <laughs> I'm not too sure about the software.